Morning all. Alright, so woke up to some news this morning that means that I'm not doing the uh, the preview right away this morning. Normally I do the preview first thing, but there's something a little more important that's going on right now in that the NHL has announced that jerseys will now be distributed made by Fanatics. Now Fanatics has been making NHL jerseys for a while. Now what I'm wearing is a starter. And I'm wearing a starter for a reason because when the NHL talks about commitment to quality and all this, starter jerseys are tough and I don't wear them very often because the logo bubbles up on them. And in some cases with with the starters, the logo kind of kind of peels off eventually. And it it was an issue for the National Hockey League jerseys both from pro players and pro player and starter both and it was around the same era. I get asked a lot about which jerseys or, you know, do a video on which jerseys are the best quality and all that. Well, I'm letting you know that if you see a starter online and if you order it, you get it and you go, this this logo looks really bubbly. This can't be real. That tells you it is. If you get a starter jersey and it looks pristine, you might have got yourself a fake. And it's, it's odd. But at any rate, um, the National Hockey League is paired with Fanatics for 10 years, starting in 2024, 2025. Now, the good news is they're going to use the same factory for the on-ice product that they use now, which is out of Quebec. What they didn't say was the retail side of it, because the ones that are made in Quebec, your on-ice Adidas jerseys that are worn by National Hockey League players are not available at retail level, right? Um, this is this has been an argument within the, the jersey buying community since Adidas took over. The fact that you as a consumer aren't allowed to buy the on-ice product. And that's by design. Now, whether that changes under Fanatics, no idea. Uh, there were a few things that I found interesting in an article I read on this. Uh, I will post a link to the article in the description on this video if you want to read through it. But first off, if you wanted a third round of reverse retros, it's not happening. Uh, it's not happening at this time. And if they had stayed with Adidas, it would not have happened. Uh, they were going to look at something else. And they've encouraged Fanatics to kind of get creative. So we may get another round of jerseys, but reverse retros are basically done. And I, I, I agree with that on some level. The thing that got me was that they, and I, I don't know why the, the question would be asked about whether or not Adidas owned the designs for the reverse retros. Of course they wouldn't. Those would be NHL owned. So I thought that was an odd part. But the fact that they admitted that the reverse retros were designed to be uh, scarce and rare. And I thought that was kind of odd. And here's why. You have a National Hockey League product that you're trying to get more and more people to consume. And you want more people buying merchandise. So making something that intentionally is hard to find or sells out and never comes back again is odd, especially since some of those reverse retros were really popular. And so especially the first round when they were selling out immediately and it was, well, they're gone, that's it. Uh, the only ones you can find now are, are basically Toronto, Winnipeg are the most common ones I see online because I'm guessing they got a whole bunch of them that those ones just didn't sell. The gray Winnipeg jersey, the gray shoulders on the, the Toronto jersey, I'm, I'm not sure what they were thinking there since neither Winnipeg nor Toronto had had gray in their jersey before. So that's where, and I've talked about this, who got reverse retro, who got the assignment right. The idea was simple. You take an old jersey design like this and you flip it. So in this case, oddly enough, you could do a gray Pittsburgh jersey with black shoulders and black around here and you reversed it. And it's a retro because it's an old design, right? Not all teams got that memo. <clears throat> and so you end up with, uh, with a very different experience for every fan base where some were really, really happy and some weren't. Now, this segues into the fact that people are pretty much 100% convinced that this idea to go to Fanatics is a bad idea. I will say this, it sounds like things are going to be, again, if you're looking at the on-ice product, going to stay the same, in that it's coming from the same factory. They're going to be made the same way. There's no indication as of yet as to how many teams might do a jersey change, you know, like this, like the redesigns we saw when Reebok came in, 
right? <clears throat> when <clears throat> when Reebok came in, there were some some major redesigns. When Adidas took over, there were some redesigns that came in as well. There will be a few teams that decide, okay, we'll go ahead and do a redesign, right? Uh, they don't have a lot of time to get that in if the manufacturing is going to be ready for the 2024-2025 season. It, it There is a long lead time between a team deciding to make that change, those jerseys getting produced, and then being sold us at a retail level. And again, what makes me concerned is the retail level. Uh, there are a lot of posts online today from people who got uh, items in the mail from Fanatics that they had they had bought that showed there was no quality control at all in those products. <clears throat> Whether you got a Jared Spurgeon jersey that says Sporgino instead of Spurgeon. Uh, whether you got a Jack Hughes jersey that has the 86 on the back and the 13 on the sleeves. Because who doesn't like Nico Hughes or Jack Heeshear? But, uh, you know, it's... And, and it's that kind of thing that, that kind of throws people off a little bit with... Wait, they went to Fanatics full-time? Um, hats. Hats are something that I've talked about that seems really minor, right? Um, I do have a lot of Fanatic hats now, but I, I don't like buying the Fanatics ha Fanatic hats because in general, they're kind of boring. And I get the feeling that the NHL, who on their uh, shop site right now have a bunch of new Mitchell and Ness designs, may have figured that out. Now, I know the Mitchell and Ness jerseys got a lot of flack and a lot of hate online, and I get it. Totally get it. I didn't do a video on the Mitchell and Ness jerseys when they came out. I will say that <clears throat> Mitchell and Ness can be kind of hit and miss. I have a Mitchell and Ness jersey myself. It, it is it is of a completely different quality than the other jerseys. It's a different material and all that, and it's, it's just different, right? So the last time that I did a countdown, the Mitchell and Ness jersey was not in said countdown of my favorite jerseys in my collection. Um, I do have to make a decision on, okay, does this to me officially qualify? Does this not officially qualify? And so, you know, I don't have practice jerseys. I don't have all-star jerseys. I don't generally have jerseys that aren't ones that are worn by players in game on a regular basis, or in the case of reverse retros, thirds, ones they wear occasionally, right? But I, I do have some concerns at the retail level based on what I've seen with hats, based on what I've seen with other leagues as well. Um, and and there's a lot of why would the NHL do this? Because Fanatics likely came in as the company that was most willing to uh, work with the NHL and was guaranteeing them a product that's made a little bit cheaper and they could sell for about the same price. Uh, when I look at Fanatics jerseys, and I do have a few Fanatics jerseys hanging behind me here, um, they are they are definitely it's it's a totally different fabric. Some people really like the Fanatics jerseys, but not a lot, right? Uh, and though we've been, I don't know. It's the weird part is that I've ha also got some Fanatic sweatshirts, so the the jersey sweatshirts and the logos on those are really really nice, and yet the logos on the jerseys you get from Fanatics aren't. So likely not made in the same factory, and that's part of it too, right? You're buying a brand, but it may not be made in the same factory. I think that the concerns about quality are there. I think that it it does create a, a PR situation for the NHL that I I I, I would imagine they'll think, ah, oh, this will just blow over. This will just blow over. But there are already people who are very picky about what they buy and they haven't bought jerseys from the National Hockey League based on their experience with Adidas quality that have fallen out of the market and now just collect all the old jerseys and look for the old CCMs and what I'm looking for is a Reebok made in Canada. I've got some of those too. The Reebok made in Canada's are excellent. They are absolutely fantastic. Uh, the Fanatic jerseys I have are, are not. And it's, it's a decision that we're, we're going to put this logo, we're just going to have a single layer, and it's, that's it, and it's going to be really shiny. And it's it's to make it so that it's it's a cheaper product, and you can sell it for a similar price. Uh, I do think that when I, when I look at the jerseys, and I know there's people say, well, I saved 50 bucks getting the Fanatics. I, and I don't have the numbers on this, <clears throat> I get the feeling that with Fanatic jerseys, the markup is probably 
the same, if not more, than you see on the Adidas jerseys. So, yeah, you can get, uh, if I'm just comparing the prices from the NHL site in Canada, you can get the the Adidas usually for $199. Some of them are $209. Now some of them have got up to $229 because why not, right? Uh, but on the Fanatic side, they're $149. So I understand people saying, well, look, for $149, I, I could do that. That's fine. But I, I think the markup is the same or higher. And Fanatics basically has said that they're going to keep things the same, but you know, a few years down the road, they might be looking for lighter materials. They might be looking to to change things and revolutionary. And it's like, okay, the the evolution of and the lighter materials part. I thought we already did that with Adidas. Like, how much lighter can we really get with this? Uh, the one thing that I did like in the article though was that they're looking at a way to make it so that the the jerseys, the protective wear for for players, socks, and even that could be uh, cut resistant because of skate cuts that happen, right? That'd be great. It'd be great if these jerseys had something in them that meant that if you're playing and you fall down and somebody, you know, runs over you with their skate, the jersey will be part of your protection. I don't know how you do that without adding weight to the jersey, though. Like, if it feels like you're putting on, you know, armor, probably not going to be light, uh, not a great experience either. So I'm not sure how you realistically do that. I, I don't know that there's a way to realistically protect players from skate cuts with jerseys and with, you know, socks as well and that kind of thing. I don't think there's a way to do it. But we shall find out. I think that it's interesting that the NHL went with this 10-year contract with Fanatics and that basically now anything you buy will be from Fanatics. Fanatics has taken over... Sport, sporting goods and and all the manufacturing side of it and it it is it is kind of obnoxious i i look at how the experience is now buying things and it feels like uh and again with hats you would have multiple different options when it came to buying hats uh you'd have you know 30 40 different potential options and and this is an adidas right this is an adidas and these these hats have been okay but even with the adidas ones i've noticed that it just I don't know there's something with the hats now where a lot of the time they're they're kind of boring they're they're kind of just the, the the creativity you used to see and I know that seems something seems like something small but now we're going to upscale that to jerseys where maybe some kind of a, a fun design instead is overridden with something that's just boring and really easy to mass produce and we'll see that's the thing we we don't have control over that I know there's a lot of people already talking about, well, I guess I'm not buying jerseys for a while, or I guess I'm going to have to buy my Adidas. So Adidas is going to get a run on people buying their jerseys right now. And we'll see just how that affects things in 2024, 2025, when the NHL Fanatics deal really, truly kicks in. Um, I know there's going to be a lot of people that, that hate this deal. I'm not saying I like it. When I heard it, my first thought was, that can't be true. And then I, I looked at where it was posted and I was like, all right, I, I guess it's true. I, I guess I guess we're going with this. Um, I understand as well that Fanatics makes the Major League Baseball jerseys that have Nike branding on it. Uh, and I, I'm pretty sure these ones will just have the Fanatics brand on them as well. Um, I would think too, if, if you want to go down that rabbit hole, one thing that people aren't asking online that I would is, so if Fanatics makes them, and if it's a streamlined pro process now where they have control over the entire product, um, ads. I don't like ads on jerseys. Uh, the the in-game ones, when I'm watching TV, okay, it's all right, that's okay. But on a retail level, depending on which team store you go to, you might get an ad on a jersey, you might not. But if you buy those jerseys, like for me, I get them through Ben H Sports. I've been very, you know, uh, very talkative about that over the years. Uh, there's no ads on the jerseys that he orders, but could that change? It could, and that's that's one of those things that I have I have in the back of my mind. Like, so are we going to start getting ads on the retail level then? Because we weren't going to with Adidas, but now with a brand new manufacturer, maybe we do. Maybe they'll, maybe they'll be like, yeah, it's just that's the way the NHL wanted it, right? Because, again, uh, that would then provide more money for the National Hockey League. If, if jerseys that, that I order have ads on them, then that's more revenue going towards the National Hockey League for those extra ads being served to the public, us. 
So I'm glad that my collection is where it is. I, I've, you know, it's been the joke over the last six years that I finished it. My collection's done. It's finished. But I'm very nervous about the switch over to Fanatics myself. I'm very glad I've got all the Adidas ones I have. And I don't want to order the jerseys that Fanatics is manufacturing at the retail level until I see them. And the NHL has had a problem with that where uh, I know when Vegas came into the league, the jerseys weren't ready at the time Vegas came into the league. So there were a lot of there there were a lot of knockoff jerseys in Vegas. And I understood because fans wanted to wear the jersey of their favorite player, of their favorite team that just came into the league, and there weren't any. And they seem to have learned from that with Seattle. They were definitely more ready with Seattle. But, you know, on a 32 team level, I again, you know, we'll we'll see how it all turns out. I'm certain all the players on the ice will have their jerseys ready. And again, they'll be from the same factory in Quebec, and that'll be great. But I would really like to know if that factory in Quebec is going to be up, upscaling their, their, their production so that they can start selling those on a retail level. Because that would definitely help win some customers back who've already dropped out of the market who want the on-ice product instead. It doesn't matter to me. Like, for me, the on-ice product, and I, and I have a few here that are, you know, that on-ice quality product, and they're nicer. But for what I do for on-camera, it's not important. It's not important. Um, I, I, I don't think it's a big deal. That's why I have some fanatics in there as well, because for me, for on-camera, it'll work. Uh, that's basically the way that I've looked at it is, well, I can order that one in the fanatics. I won't wear it. Uh, just in general, but for a video, I can wear it because you won't be able to tell the difference on camera unless the logo falls off when I sneeze, but it shouldn't. Shouldn't. Uh, but, you know, we'll get into that. I know there's been requests for me to talk about different jersey manufacturers and the experience over the years of buying jerseys, and I, I will do that as well. Uh, probably have to shoot that with my phone because uh, that seems to take a higher quality video. Uh, just for in, in close and all that, even though I've got a 4K Brio on this this uh, this computer. And the quality is good, but again, for, for looking at the details with jerseys, it seems the phone camera is better. But at any rate, um, I'd be interested to know your thoughts. I think I know most people's thoughts on this matter. I do. And I think it's the same thoughts that I had when Starter took over back in the 90s, which was, oh, great. Awesome great that's it because the the quality again uh, i don't wear the starters very often because you've got the really bubbly logos and they they all do that i had a canucks starter that my wife tried to fix it numerous times and finally i just i bought a ccm version of it and that ccm version is perfect which reminds me um i i like ccm jerseys if the nhl had gone to ccm i i think most people would be like, oh, perfect. But my guess is CCM doesn't have the money that Fanatics does. Fanatics has kind of cornered the market, uh, bought out a lot of the, the competing product, competing companies and made it so that if you, you want the new hat, you might have to buy a Fanatics because you may not be able to get it in anything else. But again, they, they can be kind of kind of boring designs and, and hats and all that. And I'm hoping we don't have that same experience with jerseys. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. It's going to be interesting. We've got another year until, well, about a year and a half until these jerseys are officially official. And we see them at a retail level. Let me know what you expect. Do you expect them to be the same as Adidas? Do you expect them to be better than Adidas? Do you expect that maybe the on-ice product will be available to those of us at a retail level once again? Or not um, and and the other side of it too would be so what if what if they just didn't have the adidas level jersey and they just hey you can just buy fanatics like and I'm, I'm not saying that will happen but we just don't know is the problem and we can only go by what's what we've experienced with fanatics and on a quality control level it hasn't always been great but uh in the name of 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 jared jared spurgino um Hopefully they get this right. Um, have quality control. Always. Always. The New York Ranger Islanders sweatshirt is nice too. So it says established 1926. And then it says New York Islanders. And it's got a Rangers logo on it. Because Rangers and Islanders, it's the same thing. 
There is no better way, I would think, to enrage fans of both teams with one shirt. So let's hope that doesn't. I don't even know how that happens. I like some of the like I saw a hat that has Boston logo and it has Penguins. Like, how does that happen? I don't. Anyways, I'll end this here. Let me know your thoughts. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.